federal judge will decide this week whether to appoint a special master to oversee the review of documents seized from former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence in this unprecedented FBI raid earlier this month. The judge saying over the weekend she's inclined to approve the former president's request. Meanwhile, the director of national intelligence, Avril Haines' office, is leading an intelligence community, uh, leading the intelligence community's damage assessment of recovered documents. Joining me now, former acting U.S. Attorney General Matt Whitaker. Matt, always great to see you. Um, your take on, on the appointment of, potential appointment of a special master. President Trump is saying documents were taken that are under attorney-client privilege that shouldn't have been taken, and he wants an accounting for what was taken, what needs to be returned, um, and it seems like he, he might get it. Yeah, good morning, Jackie. I think that's exactly where we're heading. A special master is going to add a la layer of credibility that everyone, including the FBI, should want in this case. Uh, for six years, we've you know had these investigations into Trump. We had the Russian collusion uh, hoax. We had the impeachments um, and and all the reported uh, investigations. And I think this is going to not only provide the transparency that I think is necessary in this case. Case, but it's also, um, remember, it's necessitated because they grabbed his passports. And this, uh, to your point earlier, the overbroad uh, in, uh uh, search warrant, I think, necessitates also uh, someone, a uh, third party, uh, like a special master, to look at all these documents and make sure that uh, the attorney-client privilege information, executive privilege information, and just personal records that are not included in the search warrant uh, were not scooped up mm. during the raid. I want to turn to Biden's border crisis for a moment while I have you, because nearly 4.9 uh, million illegal migrants have reportedly crossed U.S. borders since President Biden took office. And we were talking about um, some of the goals here, some of the reasons that the administration may be turning a blind eye to this, possibly changing voting demographics in this country. Um, your thoughts? That's a large number, Matt. That's an enormous number, and uh, the congressman earlier was talking about how big of a number that would be if it was its own state. But, you know, I think there's a lot of reasons motivating this, uh, you know, but it's certainly disrupting our major cities. You're seeing D.C. and New York unable to handle just a small fraction of what Texas uh, and Arizona and New Mexico are having to deal with. And so, you know, I think it's ultimately um, not only going to uh, be politically disruptive, but it's also... Uh, going to bring more crime, uh, more drugs, and more chaos into America. And, you know, the American people are tired of this. And at some point in time, we have to seal the southern border. Uh, we are the most generous country in the world, admitting over a million people a year to permanent lawful status. And so I just think, uh, you know, Joe Biden has been uh, completely uh, failed at securing the border, hasn't even tried. Mm. And, you know, right now our immigration courts are broken because the overwhelming numbers are unable to process uh, the mostly fraudulent asylum claims. Well, in Texas, Border Patrol agents say they foiled a dangerous human smuggling attempt. Three illegal migrants were crammed into the trunk of this car. I believe we have some pictures. We were showing it earlier. Um, it's really devastating to see. And, and you wonder, you know, Kamala Harris, you're the border czar that isn't even, uh, you know, paying attention to, to this. Um, you see photos like this. We talked about the fentanyl coming across the border as well. It's really heartbreaking. Yeah, when I was a U.S. attorney, I saw uh, several people pulled out of a trunk. I saw someone pulled out from behind the back seat of a, uh, you know, a, a single cab pickup truck. I mean, obviously, the southern border is constantly under assault, especially at our southern border. But one of the main vulnerabilities is the more people you have crossing the border, the, the increases the likelihood of illegal drugs, including deadly fentanyl, coming across the border. And, you know, again, we are having, unfortunately, put all these resources uh, that should be looking for drugs and illicit uh, illegal imports, uh, we're taking them off of that review and putting them on uh, recording these asylum claims and trying to document these folks who are coming across our border illegally. It's just uh, the, the whole system is broken, and the more people they're trying to put through it, it's causing all sorts of distortions that are making us less safe. And, you know, I fear, you know, future attacks from terrorists that have come in through our poor southern border in the future. Yeah, these are all major issues um, that many people across the country are concerned about. Lee.
Matt, there's a lot of people out there who, who say that if you stop um, immigration, there's a lot of good people who want to come here, and this is what America was founded on. Is there a way to, to sort of weed them out so that we, we can stop the, the bad from coming in and keep the, the, the good folks coming in? Because I, I'm, I'm so tired of the argument that saying if we want to yeah. change immigration, that you must not care about the good people that are trying to come in. That's, yeah, Lee, that's just not, not true. I mean, we are, like I pointed out, not only generous, the, the real challenge is chain migration, where if you get here, then you can bring in other members of your family. We should move to a merit-based system that we take the best and the brightest from around the world to help our country grow and prosper. And it seems to me that every other country does this except the United States of America. And, you know, we while we, we are generous, we can't just take all the low-skilled, uneducated, people from around the world that just because they want to come here come here illegally and then they are here uh, until you know ultimately we don't have the resources to remove them and so you know we need a rational system that works we need one that serves the American interest and the American people and the system we have right now unfortunately while generous is not built to uh, help the United States of America former AG Matt Whitaker we really appreciate your time this morning and your insight as always great to see you Thank you. Good to see you.